Hi, everyone. It's Ann DeSantis, and thank you so much for joining me on this Zoom meeting. This is also being recorded, saying hi to our friends out there uh, on social media and on YouTube uh, to talk about my new book. The book is called Love and Care for the Marginalized, and it is a book available through karispublishing.com, and it's spelled C-H-A-R-I-S publishing.com. And it's a book of 40 meditations. Every single day, there is a quote uh, a reflection, and also a prayer and a call to action. And the whole idea of the book is helping us to have a greater awareness of people who are marginalized in our own lives. I think we all know them. When we think of the word marginalized, maybe we'll start there with all of you. Uh, who do you think of when I say marginalized? Whoever wants to share. Well, I'll speak first, and <laughs> this is Father Matthew. Um, you know, I, I, as a Mercedarian, I'm an order where we we uh, we vow our lives to give our lives necessary for those in danger of losing the faith. I think that, you know the marginalized for us as Mercedarians are those who would who um, experience hopelessness, um, isolation, and 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 anything that really can. Um, threaten their perception or awareness that God is indeed with them. And, um, you know, and of course, for people to experience God, um, yes, we experience him interiorly, but we also experience God through the grace that flows through others. And so, you know, if, if, uh, people of God are not present or don't seek out those who are isolated um, either physically or emotionally or psychologically or, or whatever, then, then there can be that lack of that, that experience, that full experience of our Lord's presence. So that's kind of, again, as a Mercedarian, how I would see the marginalized. I know you have a connection to the Mercedarians as a third order Mercedarian, um, but I, I think that spirit was, was in you um, long before you knew who the Mercedarians were. Yes, thank you so much. May I ask also whoever, um, if we could all mute, um, unless somebody's talking, I think that would help a lot, uh, just so we don't hear that background noise. Thank you. Yeah, I think you said it very well, because um, I think when we think about suffering, all of us have been affected by suffering in some way. Maybe it's been through a, a physical ailment. It could be something spiritual, psychological, maybe a job loss, a loss of a loved one. I mean, all of us have been affected by it. And I think that the reason I wrote this book is that we all have a choice when it comes to how do we react, right? And what do we do? We've been affected by it. We have a choice that we can either become bitter or better, right? where we can become victims or victors. And in that way, I mean, in, in, the, in the light of Christ and in our relationship with God. Uh, and that's really what this book is about. And I took the, the quotes, uh, every day there's a different quote. It's either from a saint, it's from Holy scripture, a Pope. I even put some other religious leaders and movie quotes in there too. And um, so I thought I could read you a little bit of the full word so that people who are watching, especially after the fact, to get to know what is this book about, is that life circumstances teach us about life virtue and learning to hear God's voice during challenging times pre presented to us. This book has been born through much contemplation, reflection, thought, and most of all, prayer. The goal of this book is to lead the reader through 40 days of reflections geared at opening our hearts to those who are marginalized and who are the marginalized, they are those people who through many circumstances of life have experienced loneliness, isolation, and have become among those who are the forgotten of life and of society. And I'll just stop there. I would just ask all of us, and maybe we can talk a little bit more. Father Matthew brought up some points about the marginalized. And in my mind, I mean, goes right to someone like homeless or someone who's been rejected by society in some way. Do any of you have any other thoughts about that? Where, where does your mind go to when you think about who are the marginalized? Anne? 
Yes. Um, I write about mercy, as you know, um, and I, I wrote a book about the works of mercy and it came from, I spent a year doing uh, corporal and spiritual works of mercy. And, um, and I really began that year thinking of the marginalized as, okay, the, you know, people of those of us who are blessed to go do for others, you know, and I really did. I, like you're saying, I thought of the homeless, the imprisoned, the sick, the elderly, um, and, and certainly those things are important, but what I realized through my own journey, um, by that end of the year, I just, I realized how desperate I was for mercy. You know, I wasn't hungry for a meal, but I was hungry for mercy. And I did not understand God's mercy, um, really until I went out and served in that capacity. And, um, and it was really a, a game changer for me because recognizing his mercy allowed me to let him love me, you know, before that, you know, it's really hard to to let God love you if, if when you think you're not worthy of it. Um, so to me, the, like I, I think now I have a much broader sense of who the marginalized are. And I think, um, I think in some ways, uh, a big group of who the marginalized are now are people without faith. You know, people that, that don't almost don't even know what they're missing and don't and are so afraid, you know, they're so, um, you know, they think we're nuts. And so they it's like they build this, this wall, but they have such emptiness, you know, and, and that makes me, you know, really, really sad, but okay. Yeah, no, thank you. And I also want to mention to them the name of your book. Her book is called Simple Mercies. It's available through our, our Sunday visitor. And so you can go to their page, just Google it and look up uh, Laura Patanjan. And she wrote the book, as I get, said, Simple Mercies. So yeah, I agree with you completely because I think we all have that thought in our mind about who the marginalized are. And it is, like you said, the elderly, the sick, the outcast, but these are people that we know. These are people in our own families. These are people that are in our neighborhoods. They could be our next door neighbor. These are our extended family members. And as you said, it could be people who don't have faith. But I also think that one way, and I talk a lot about this in my book, is that we can show mercy is by something called active listening. And I would just ponder that to all of you. What, what is that exactly? What is active listening? And I think what active listening is, is when we really search our hearts, when we converse with other people, uh, are we, and I'm saying this to myself too, are we listening so that we can answer and, and tell people our thoughts and our beliefs and get our point across, or are we doing it simply to be there for that other person and letting them have that opportunity to say what they need to say? And also agenda. Because I think we all have an agenda every day, no matter who we are. I mean, whether it is in our work agenda, our home, that to-do list that we have. And we all have to get things done every day, right? I mean, everybody has things they need to do, we have responsibilities. But part of that active listening is also letting go for just a little while of my agenda. Like here, here's a perfect example, right? This meeting is about my book, right? So do I have an agenda? Okay. Do I want people to buy this book? Yeah. It'd be nice if people bought the book, but I just want to say that when I really search my heart and my, my soul is that my agenda is not, uh, I'm trying to make it that it's not for me to just make money. Okay. Cause I don't know if, you know, how much all of you know about the publishing world, but this book is really, um, I'm not going through a large publisher. I'm going through uh, Karis publishing, so it's not one of those larger uh, companies. I'm basically doing it all myself. I'm not, no one else is promoting this book, but me, if that makes any sense. Uh, and, and so you, all of you who are watching, you're kind of like the helpers to get the word out about what this book is about. And, um, and my only hope and thought with trying to let people know about this book is that, you know, we can make a difference in our simple, simple interactions that we have with other human beings in our conversations. 
And um, so I just want to turn it back to all of you. When you think about that, how do you, what do you think are some ways that in our daily lives, and I mean really like people that are in your own home or people that you see at daily mass, wherever you go, how can we be more attentive to others? Let's just bring that to all of you. I, and I get one of the, one of the ways I think that we can be attentive to others is to resist the temptation to make assumptions. Because even when we speak of the marginalized, sometimes the ones who are marginal, oh, sorry, my phone just fell. Sometimes those who are marginalized are the ones that we least expect to be marginalized. And sometimes we make assumptions, we put people into categories, maybe, maybe because of their economic status or what is their perceived social status or their career. And then we, we, you know, we make assumptions, you know, and, and then, okay, and then there's this other person over here, they must be needy and marginalized. Well, sometimes the ones that we think that are needy and marginalized are the ones that have it the most together. <laughs> you know, we make assumptions about them and then we miss the opportunities. And sometimes, um, as we say in our Mercedarian language, the captives are, are sometimes are right next to us and the ones that we think, you know, that we just assume, well, they must have it all together. They don't have any difficulties. And they could be struggling the most and because people make those assumptions and they really need somebody to listen, to see them as human, to care about them. But everybody just assumes, oh, they're fine. And what happens? And then we hear that suddenly there's a crisis or maybe sadly, you know, there's a suicide attempt. Everything, and people go, well, where did that come from? Well, it's because everybody made assumptions and nobody looked at that person as a person. And um, and so certainly that that's one way that we can we can you know approach that is to don't make assumptions above every everybody is an individual everybody has trials everybody experiences certain emptinesses and we have to listen to discover what those are um we can't put people in the boxes no i, th I think that's a very good point and when it comes to mercy, when it comes to making outreach to others, uh, you're right, we can't put people in a box. Have you ever been in a group of people where uh, the, the conversations are flowing? Maybe it's in the church parking lot. Maybe it's at a party with your family. Maybe it's at the dinner table with your own uh, immediate family. Maybe it's on a Zoom call at work. And, uh, and you notice that some people are very good with uh, it, with being around others, with knowing the right things to say, uh, almost sort of like that wittiness that they have where everyone laughs when someone says something. And I also think that sometimes those marginalized people are people who are those quiet ones, those people who don't seem to say too much, uh, the people who are, um, you know, maybe they're sort, sort of poked fun at sometimes. Maybe, do you remember in high school? So when you were in a class, sometimes it was that person that, you know, everybody kind of like laughed when they said something or they were sort of, you know, that outcast and I, you know, using that word right from the Bible. Right. But I mean, in my opinion, that's also who those marginalized people are. And when we keep our eyes open to them, maybe it's that family member that, you know, there's a little camaraderie between your extended family, but that one person isn't usually included. And so I just would ask the people that are pondering and, and watching this video is think about those people that you know, who uh, they might not always have that great comeback when everybody else laughs. You know, does anybody know anybody like that? You know, that, that have you ever been in a group where you felt like that person, you know, where, you know, you weren't, you didn't get as many laughs as, as everybody else. Maybe it's that person in your church group, your church group that uh, just doesn't quite fit in. You don't know why, but they just don't, you know, everybody else went out to breakfast after daily mass, but they just kind of walked to their car. Uh, you know, I, I know these are just things that are, you know, I, that I've learned from my own life and also about really what this book is about. Um, and I think that what it all comes down to is a greater awareness about who these people are in our lives, right? Who are these people? And, and we all have an agenda, don't we? We all wanna be liked. We all wanna be somewhat popular. We all want people to think we're an okay person. We know what we're doing. Uh, we, we want people to think we're smart and things like that. But once we let go of that and say, you know what? It's not really important that 
what people think about me, uh, whether I'm successful, whether I'm a, the type of person that gets that pat on the back for the great job that they did, or the one that gets the laughs after you make a joke, you know, um, it's really about remembering that those are the things that aren't really important to God. They're not. And I think of those three P's, pride, pleasure, and power. And I think that in, when I was writing this book is part of what I'm trying to do. And what I try to do through writing this book was to get us to really examine in our own lives. Are we seeking after pride? Are we trying to be prideful about our accomplishments? The pleasure of life and also power. Everybody wants to feel like they have some kind of power, right? So let's talk about that. Uh, would anybody have anything to say about those three Ps and how they've affected your own life? I think I'm gonna share um, what, uh, at first before faith, I was full of pride, I guess, with my family being a little, you know, prideful themselves. And uh, I've learned that it's, it's not what God wants us to do. It, what God wants us to do is just to be humble, to be, you know, to be, you know, respectful and all these kinds of things that what I've learned over the years, because before I wasn't like, you know, I was accepting that pride is just not coming from God and pride is like, it's all negative. So I just like swipe left and leave it alone. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So. And I became a mom and I teach my kids that pride is just not the way to do things. Pride is just wasting your time. Pride is just like not like the person you really are. Who you really are is what's inside of you. And that's staying humbled. So that's what I learned. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing. And um, I also think that this is also to me is a big uh, revelation, I'll call it, is that I think that to me where the rubber meets the road, and I don't know if anybody else has anything to say on this, is that when I come to that realization that everything that I think, believe, and my agenda isn't necessarily correct, right? I have to be humble enough to say that uh, other people's ideas are just as important as mine. And so that's what these 40 meditations are all about, uh, really. And I'm just, I thought I'd read you just day one, just so that you can get an idea. And like I said, um, it is a Catholic book, but I did take some ideas that weren't uh, also quotes that weren't specifically uh, Catholic, but we reflected on it in a Catholic way. So my day one is to care about what God cares about. And that's from Rick Warren, pastor and author examining our thoughts and actions to care about what God cares about is not only a daily task, but important in our daily living. Love and care for the marginalized begins with us when we take the time to care about what God cares about. The world needs your care and your action. Don't be afraid to challenge yourself in this task. Ask God to help you to care about what God cares about and then act. And the action for the day is to make a list of simple things you can do to help others to experience God's presence in their lives in greater ways. These are actions you can do easily within your own family and with those closest to you. After you make the list, begin with, begin with the task. Start with family and branch out to others. And then the prayer is, Lord Jesus, help me to care about the things that matter to God, namely the welfare of others, including their needs, both materially and spiritually. Amen. So that just, just gives you an idea of what, what you'll be reading in this book. Um, I also put in the chat for people here on the Zoom call, uh, if you're interested in buying the book, you can go to karispublishing.com. Now I'm gonna offer a special too to everybody here and watching the video is um, if you'd like an autographed copy of the book, which I can send to you directly, um, it is a discount with no shipping. It's just $10 flat, $10. Um, and uh, I can also provide you with uh, my Venmo or PayPal. So just message me. For people who are watching this, uh, you can go to my website at andesantis.com and just message me through the contact there. Uh, my email address is andesantis2022 at gmail. And then, like I said, in the chat there. So 
Uh, so just $10 for the autograph copy, no shipping. And for anybody who orders the book of more than 10 books or more, you get an extra $5 discount if you want to share that with, you know, friends of yours at church or whoever it is. Um, so let's go back if we could talk about um, how can we be less selfish in our lives? I mean, I think that selfishness is something I fight every single day. I don't know about all of you, but we all have our own agenda, don't we? I mean, whether it be getting things, my things done during the day, right? When I get that unexpected phone call, am I going to say, well, I'll schedule you next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Or am I going to take that call if I can, right? I think that's a simple way that we can be attentive to other people. Not to say that we have to drop everything for everybody that we meet and see all day long, right? But to being open to the Holy Spirit when somebody wants to talk to me or ask me a question, am I going to get back to them on email a week later or am I going to try to get back soon? What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think that it's important to, um, I guess for a word would come to mind would be be mindful of the fact that if it is like one phone call, not like drop everything and just your whole day is like pushed over by people who like take up your time needlessly, but um, like meaning on their schedule, but have a schedule. And if someone calls and maybe it's kind of inconvenient, just take the call so that it's not so self-involved about what I have to do during the day and stuff like that. No, that makes complete sense. I don't think it's about the fact that we can't do our duties, right? I mean, we all have a vocation. We all have things that we need to get done in a day, you know, when it's time to make yeah. dinner and things like that. I think there's got to be some kind of boundaries too, right? Does that make sense? Um, so it is about boundaries, but it's about following God's will. Um, but I think a lot of it is in my own reflection here, it's about um, trying to avoid those three P's, the pride, the power, the pleasure, and trying to be more humble about myself and about my own agenda and what's important to me. And I think the book really, the book is about making what's important to other people have some kind of importance for us too. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree with that. I think, yeah. Thank you. So um, I thought we could also talk about um, for anyone who has, has thought about some of these things that I'm thinking about here, uh, how can we care less? And I don't mean about our well being, but how can we care less about those selfish parts of our lives and be more attentive? Can anyone give us some prayer, reflection, something that's helped you to become more attentive to others? Well, and I, I have to say, one thing I could suggest is getting your book. <laughs> if I, what I, I have to say that what, what I was impressed with the, just the, uh, there, um, I, I don't know, I guess one of my conference, Father Tony, I always likes to say, uh, short, sweet, and to the point. I, I have to say that the meditation, they're, they're short, sweet, and to the point, and extremely practical. And, you know, as, as one who has to give homilies, one of, I had a homily professor that always said, you got to give some sort of concrete application in your homilies. That gets to get difficult to do after a while. And I have to say that hey, as a priest and somebody has to preach, there, there's, there's a lot of meat there and very brief, you know, I, I don't have to go on for hours with people to give them a practical application. So I've got 40 practical applications that I can periodically pull out of your book. I mean, that that is extremely useful and extremely helpful as as a preacher or even people who want to meditate you know people you know that are trying to get back into a prayer life or develop a prayer life it can seem daunting because you know the time wise but you know these 40 meditation you know you could you could do 40 days in a row you could spread it out throughout the year you could you know spin a wheel and pick out a number and do one and they're they're very short and practical but very deep and i have to say i was very impressed by that Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I tried to do that because if for anybody who knows me as a, as a person, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not really all that wordy of a person. <laughs> um, I am more of a listener than I am a talker for the most part. So this is even kind of hard for me to, um, 
to just be, you know, the, the main person who's presenting here. Um, I do want to give an opportunity to three of the other authors here before we end, because this call is going to be done in about eight minutes or so. Now, I did put in the link there uh, another one we can go on. If you have a chance at 1145, we'll go back and just kind of finish without the recording part of it. So before I end, I want to give the rest of the stage to our three authors, but I do want to mention that if anybody is interested in ordering this book and you want to get the autographed copy, it's just $10 free shipping. You can go to andesantis.com and just send me a message there. At, we'll do it via Venmo or PayPal. So that's all I'm going to say about me. Um, and let's turn it over first to Laura. Tell us a little bit more about your book. Okay. Laura, oh, there she is. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, technology is not my gift to the world. <laughs> but to, to speak to your other question, you know, my this is my book. It's Simple Mercies, but it's how the works of mercy bring peace and fulfillment. So what you were, you know, just saying about, you know, how can we become less selfish and everything? To me, um, it's making that connection between our service and our savior, you know, that, that there is so much, um, like it was so much easier for me to go out into the community and serve than it was for me to like be patient with my mother. Um, you know what I mean? Like, that's just the reality. And it's kind of like what you were saying, like, how do you deal with those like unexpected phone calls and those, you know, oh, can you do this? Can you do that? And you're just like, oh my goodness, you know? And, um, and there's, yeah. I think there can be so much mundanity in service. Um, and so I think it's super important to just kind of um, realize that you're doing it for God. And I think that's a game changer, you know, that when we have that intention of, okay, if, you know, it's like Mother Teresa says, start with those closest to you. So when these things come up, you know, it really is like, let me put down what I'm doing. This is how God is asking me to serve right now. I think that's really, um, it's really helped me, you know, I think with my own selfishness um, to, to try and, and focus on that. And I think that too, the peace comes from, you know, I was even a few weeks ago, I was kind of in a funk for like a day or two. And, you know, and you, of course you get annoyed with yourself when you're in a funk because you're like, why am I in a funk, you know? <laughs> and, um, and then I had the opportunity to do something nice for somebody and I did it and I felt better and it just kind of turned it around for me. Do you know what I mean? I just think that we were created for this kind of service. And that's what I love about your book is just, you know, to have some kind of way to start the day with just this intention. I'm going to serve today, just right where I'm at this organic part of my daily life. I think that's beautiful. Thank you so much. And again, if people want to buy Laura's book, go to our Sunday visitor. Now I said three authors, but we actually have four. We have six, uh, five minutes left. So maybe do one minute a piece. We'll go with Tamara. Tell us about your book. Uh, yeah, sure. So yeah, you know, first of all, I want to congratulate you. And, and um, just kind of as a quick add on is that, you know, we as humans, we understand that if we eat junk food, we're going to get fat and out of shape. But I don't think we so much understand that to the information that we receive. And so it's, uh, I'm going to check out your book because... You know, basically the world tells us we have to be judgmental, we have to be opinionated, and we have to hate the other side. And so it's very important that to have something that resets us um, and then feeds us spiritually, because if not by default, we're going to default to the ways of the world and, and keep marginalizing the, the marginalized. And then as far as my book, just real quick, it's um, the whole premise behind it is that, you know, what I've noticed in, in my coaching practice is that typically something happens in our lives that hurts us. And because of that, we end up controlling things. We end up um, controlling other people, ourselves, trying to be somebody that we're not for the people so that we fit in. And so the whole idea behind this book is to help you understand where that's happening and help you make more of based choices. And much like your book, there's questions in there, practical applications that you can do uh, to help you set yourself back on a way less from control and more to the, the love and to the person that God created you to be. 
Thank you so much. And that's marakrudak.com. Now, I'm sorry, we have four minutes. Uh, we have actually Kathy Nipper is also an author, but I don't know if we'll have time to. She's the one um, on our call, but not on the video. So we have four minutes left. William in a minute, and then uh, Ray in a minute. Can you tell us about you and your writing? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Anne. I'm excited to check out your book and write that review. I promised you I would do for you. Uh, my website is williamhemsworth.com. And I just finished writing my conversion story. For those that don't know, I converted to the faith while I was in a Baptist seminary. So I just wrote about that process and I'll leave it at that. And thanks for having <laughs> thanks, thanks for holding this call. <laughs> yeah, William Hemsworth, right? Is it williamhemsworth.com, I think? Yes. That's right. That's right. So Ray Haywood? Yes, I'm, I'm here today. I'm actually supporting Anne. Uh, didn't expect that I would be on. Kind of in a bad situation, but it is what it is. Uh, I wrote Tools to Ready the Journey, A Father's Guide to a Faith-Filled Family. Tools to Ready the Journey is for the younger man. Um, and the subtitle of A Father's Guide to a Faithful Family is for us older men to reach in and share the awarenesses with them. You know, I wrote down the three things that Ann mentioned a couple of times intentionally today, pride, power, and pleasure. And that makes me think of what C.S. Lewis said about the three things that, you know, are our what we fall to in life is fear, vice, and pride. Mm -hmm. And whenever we align those three things, we can always find ourselves being separated, uh, especially in our faith walk, uh, marginalized. Those people that Ann were talking about, a lot of that has to do with the father. So, and this book is written, first chapter is the masculine journey. And a TRJ Father's Guide, Dot com is where you can go to find out more about it. But Bill Snyder and myself did chapter podcasts on each chapter. And when we did the chapter podcast on the masculine journey, when we got to the last stage, one of the things is men, we come into our spirituality later on in life for a lot of us. And that's when we start to become humble. So an awareness of humble, humility as a man and understanding to find himself in the masculine journey is something I would like to leave with all of you today. But Thank again, uh, I'm, I'm not able to stay for the next part. I have somebody coming at noon, but Anne, you're doing great. I can't wait Thank to you. get a signed book from you. <laughs> okay. And, Thank you. You know, I tell you all the time about the encouragement. Thank you, Anne. Yeah, right. Thank you so much. I also want to make a note that Kathy Nipper is also on the call. We, th this is going to end in a minute. So Kathy, I don't know if you want to say anything about your work. If you're here with us still, um, we just have a minute left, but please do um, check out. It's Kathy, K-N-I-P-P-E-R, and she is an editor and an author, and she is on social media. Are you with us, Kathy? Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody. This call is going to be ending in a minute, so why don't we have, if Father Matthew is still with us, or is he gone? I think he might have had to leave. So, um, oh yeah, Kathy has in the chat that she's an author in progress and have to leave after this session. Uh, I help, and he, she helps authors find readers. So definitely do keep an eye on Kathy G. Nipper. Thank you, everyone. Um, why don't we end with a prayer because this is gonna end. If you'd like to join part two, which is not gonna be taped, we're just gonna have a discussion. Uh, I did leave the Zoom meeting inside the chat. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for being with us on this call. I ask you to bless all those people who are watching. And we do truly ask you to bless the marginalized people in our own lives and help us to make better outreach to them. And we ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and for the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you so much. And if maybe I can see you on the next call. 11.